call this meeting to order. Please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Welcome. Thank you all for being here. Um, do we have addition? We do have an addition to the agenda. You would like to add the grade reconfiguration under H, item H number three. Okay. Anything else? Mm -mm. Okay. Do um, you need to take a vote on that? Oh yes. Um, do I have a motion to add that to business operations item number three? I'll make a motion. I'll second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Um, okay. Opportunity for uh, public comment. Anything? Okay. Superintendent report. So I'm happy to announce we received an email today from the Department of Education that Tri Creek Schools has been identified as a performance qualified district. Again, it's the highest category ranking that you can get through the state. So congratulations to our school community for that. That's excellent. I would like to report that um, in preparation for next school year, I know Mrs. Harden uh, in particular asked about uh, sports on the early release days and um, the half days. And we did send out a survey to all of the athletes at middle school and high school levels. There was a lot of varied responses of do you want your kid to go to a, a two-hour study table and then go to practice? The second preference would be you go home and then you find your own way back. Um, and then the third one was, um, so we had two hours stay, go home, come back, and then what was the third one? The third one was, what other option is there? I was kind of wondering. No, there's three yeah. options. And the school Go dairy queen and come back afterwards? Oh, I know what it was. If um, a lay coach could start the practice immediately at the early dismissal, would you like to have practice and then go home? And so there was a whole mixed <coughs> bag. And I think um, what we determined was we could run a study table for those that we wouldn't have an enormous amount of kids that would be staying for a study table. So I think we can handle that. The ones that wanna go home and come back, they can do that. And if there's a lay coach that can do practice and it works for the team, they could do that. So, okay. Um, any concerns with what I've presented? Yeah. Um, talk to the Adventure Club as well. Um, they're putting together some information for our families that we'll put in our district newsletter in preparation for next school year. So they will be offering um, a program specific for the early dismissal. So if parents want to elect just for the early dismissal days or the half days, they will have that option to do that as well. And that would be in-house? Um, yeah, it would be on our campus. Okay. And then they also put... Um, a notice together that we will share with our support staff uh, for our instructional assistants who uh, would be released early as well. If they wanna go then and work for Adventure Club, they would consider having them as employees and so we'd be a employee share. Um, I had a question too recently about Adventure Club and the intermediate schools. Have there been any decisions on that? So we will offer Adventure Club for the intermediate school, depending on the numbers. Um, and as well as staffing, it may result in them getting on a bus and uh, going over to Oak Hill, but we will offer that to the intermediate school kids. Awesome, thank you. Um, we are still um, putting the final touches on our uh, budget reductions, and so at the next board meeting, hope to have a finalized tally mm -hmm. of how that ended up, and we have one agenda item tonight mm -hmm. um, regarding the reduction in force, but the good news is that um, very minimal layoff um, as a result of the attrition approach. That's what you hope for. Um, the board had expressed interest at the work session regarding uh, taking the Opportunity Center and putting that 100% virtual. Um, I met with um, 
couple of high school administrators today to talk through that. And we came up with, if we go with a virtual option, but a virtual check-in with a staff person in the beginning daily to say, okay, what, what is your goal to accomplish over the next 24 hours and to progress monitor that. And so instead of that being face-to-face, -face, it would be a daily check-in. It works with our existing staffing. And we felt like that was a, a good middle ground um, to see how that might play out. They were uh, very positive. So I'm looking to see if the board would be receptive to that approach. Um, Still don't love the idea. I definitely would rather see them in person. I, or I, I guess the hybrid model the, of in person and virtual. Mm -hmm. I was very much involved with uh, the alternative school and stuff. And I know the significance of having the kids in person physically communicating with them, having them <coughs> communicate with others, being responsible, being on time, accountable for what they're doing. And I don't know, my personal experience, I'm not real crazy about the online format. I think we lose a lot of the benefits that we have of in-classroom instruction. So, I mean, I'll support what the majority does, but I'm really strong about in, in the seat classroom experiences for all the kids. Okay, so that's good feedback. Um, let me work with the high school admin and maybe it's worthy for them to come and present a new uh, here's what it currently looks like I think it probably looks a little different oh I'm sure it does than sure it does. what you had experienced and what would be proposed mm -hmm. before we make any final decisions okay. That's probably good. and again um, to like the numbers like how many students are we talking about throughout the course of the year even like beginning of the year to the end of the year I'm sure it changes right. um, so I'd be interested in, in seeing that as well. I'd, I'd also be interested in the stats of, of uh, you know, how many kids physically come and follow their program, whatever it is, and make it all the way through successfully mm -hmm. versus those that started and then dropped out and you don't see them again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Kindergarten, we met with the elementary principals today to consider a, an appeal process for parents uh, regarding enrollment in kindergarten. The state code says a certain age by August 1st. However, if the child goes through the assessment, has good scoring, parent could appeal. So we're considering putting something together for an appeal up to the September 1st date. Um, Kevin forwarded me some information and a tool that we might be able to use and so yeah i believe there is an instrument out there mm -hmm. iowa called the iowa assessment right and and if the kids meet that or exceed it i mean why wouldn't we let them in but you know mm -hmm. i'll follow what you suggest um i just hope that it doesn't become then the new standard I, I, like, I don't want it to just be that now all of a sudden that is the new cutoff date. Mm -hmm. You know, that it, I mean, it has rigid, to be. yes or no. Yeah, that it has to be an application process to, you know, there's a process to getting that waiver. Correct. And that's the tool that we're basically building now in draft form. Okay. Because, the, the, again, the state law is August 1st. Yeah. Right. The problem is, uh, as people continue to move, uh, across the state line from Illinois, Illinois is September 1st. And so it's, people are having a hard time saying, okay, 30 day difference, it's okay over there, but you come five miles this way and it's not okay. And we have limited preschool state options. State we are, totally. So that's all you can do. But if we got guardrails in place. Um, yeah. That's also, you're saying the appeal process would be if we have the opening space. Correct. In our yeah. Yeah, good question. Um, and those are the updates that I have. Okay, staff recognition. Yeah, it's Teacher Appreciation Week, nurse, uh, Nurses Day yesterday, so just wanna shout out to all of our school staff for everything that you do. Perfect. All right, board member reports. Here. <laughs> Last night we had our NYSEX uh, board meeting, and again, just the general uh, agenda, however, as a result of um, Teacher Appreciation Week, we did have 
three of our um, special ed representatives there, Dan Gover, Megan Hoover, and Lori Brown Runyon. And uh, they got a certificate and they had some snacks and again, we congratulated them. We sincerely appreciated everything that they do and our teachers do every single day. Uh, it's changed a lot and the, the, the load and coursework is, is overwhelming and so we sincerely appreciate everything that everybody does in the educational um, arena. And that's about it. Okay. Any others? Thanks. All right, school spotlight presentation, Oak Hill Elementary. Come on up. Five, five, nine. Thank you guys so much for having us this evening. We are so excited to spotlight Oak Hill Elementary. We have some very special guests to help us. Um, I am Elizabeth Slough. I'm an interim principal currently. Uh, next year, I will be the principal of Oak Hill Elementary. Sure. I'm Teresa Patrovito. I'm of the Dean of Students at Oak Hill. I'm Allison Bird, the Student Support Advisor at Oak Hill. We will have our students introduce themselves momentarily. We wanted to take a moment to just talk about um, Principal Muha. So I'll let Allison. Yeah, so um, Mrs. Muha obviously would love to be here tonight um, to talk about our school. Unfortunately, that is not in the cards. Um, but just to give you guys a good update, Mrs. Muha remains ever positive um, on her recovery journey. And um, Mrs. Petrovito and I just spent some time with her recently and she just had nothing but excitement for all of the things that she is still working on and all of the pride for, of course, our students, our staff, um, and our new leader. And we wanna recognize that much of the work that we're gonna talk about in this presentation um, is her work that she's built with her staff, so. Um, okay, so one of the things that we wanted to highlight today was our Science Bowl team, which we have some representatives here with us. So um, our Science Bowl team was the state champions this year in their competition this January. Um, out of their class, the red class, which had 22 other schools that they competed against throughout the whole state of Indiana. Um, so pictured here, we have Patrick Jameson, Gavin McGuire, uh, Michael Doty, Delilah McCarthy, Katie Richardson, and Tony Ortega. And our team is coached by two of our fourth grade teachers, Michelle Haviland and Brandy Burns. Um, so next we are going to have um, the students introduce themselves and also talk a little bit about their science bowl experience. What do you think of your science bowl experience? Yeah. Science bowl was fun because we got to hang out with our friends after school and just learn stuff beyond our grade. Yeah. Wonderful. I'm Tony Ortega and I love science bowl because, like I just said, I got to spend time with my friends. I got to connect with different people that were in different grades than me. And I just really like it overall. Good. I'm Michael Doty and I really like science bowl because one, we got to learn a bunch of science that I never knew before. We got to talk to our friends after school, and we got to participate in the competition. Wonderful. I'm Delilah McCarthy, and I like science school because we got to learn a lot of stuff that we don't get to learn in our career. Great. Congratulations. So we have an exciting opportunity for you guys. You're going to have a little mini science school competition. Uh -oh. <laughs> so we're going to split you into two teams. So you guys are going to be team A. You guys are team B. 
Okay. Come on, Andrew. All right, I'm gonna let um, Nate and count on you. Tony, <laughs> Tony and Lila, can you guys explain the directions? <laughs> Thirty seconds. We're old. <laughs> so do we? Do we cuddle up them. and we get our answer and then we announce it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And Patrick's gonna read the questions to you. Okay, so we're gonna put them up right here. I read it, then we'll start this. Chloroplasticidoplasmic ribosome and mitochondria. B. Cell wall, cell membrane, nucleus, and cytoplasm. C. Ribosome, cell membrane, nucleus, and reticulum. And D. Cytoplasm, mitochondria, molecule, and cell wall. All right, 30 seconds to talk amongst your team. I was thinking B or D. Oh. <laughs> but no, a human would not have, or an animal yeah. wouldn't have cytoplasm, so it's got to be B. But that's what about, too. But what about this one? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's W. And I'm not sure. Yeah, let's go. I think it's C. Okay. I have no And the answer is? Well, you have to tell us your answer. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we going with it? Team B would like to stick with B is our answer. B is your answer. We're choosing C. Okay. The correct answer was C. Oh. Woo! Yay. Nice job. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Got one more question. Break. 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 And we don't have a tiebreaker, so. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, we'll arm wrestle. We may not need one. <laughs> Which two structures of a cell carry out sim similar functions? A, mitochondria and chloroplast. B, nucleus and molecule. C, plastids and Golgi papyrus, or D, flagella and cilia. Those are hard ones. Yeah. Yeah. When you guys do, oh, wait. Hey. We're going to ask a question? Yes, I was oh. wondering, when you guys do this, do you have to decide as a whole team, or do you individually do it? Yeah, oh, wow. Did you guys have any resources that you had to, like, be able to look through, or was it just from memory? I mean, if you have a computer, yeah. 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 Yeah.
So um, we are above a lot of the neighboring districts with our proficiency in English language arts, um, including Crown Point, Lake Central, Hanover, um, and slightly above the district average at 52.9%. Um, our students participate in NOEA testing, which gives a projection. Um, so the data that I have here is a little bit old. So it is um, fall to winter testing. So we were at about 50% above our app proficiency at that point with 21.9% approaching for ELA. Now I'm gonna talk about math. So we were at about 65.6% proficiency, but we would like to be at 70% proficiency. Um, so looking at how we compare to other areas, um, we are well above a lot of the other areas, uh, corporations in the, around us, um, including Lake Central, Crown Point, slightly above the dis or below the district average, which is 70.9% yeah, proficiency. Um, and again, our NOEA projections, um, at that point, we were projecting about 55% at or above and 20% approaching. We will get those scores pretty soon to see if we've met our goal. They were looking promising so far in the preliminary that we looked at. I did want to highlight our fourth grade. We have a lot of fourth grade students here, so this is exciting. Um, so our fourth graders at Oak Hill actually showed the highest growth in the district in both math and ELA from the fall to winter NOEA. Um, they were actually in the 99th percentile for conditional growth, so that is amazing. Mm -hmm. And just to talk a little bit about kind of the strategies they use and how we're going to be really taking that into what we do next year. So you guys have learned a lot about PLCs through these presentations, so I'm not gonna get like super detailed in that, but we are participating in professional learning communities. Um, another thing that we are doing as a school and really implementing a lot next year is something called Fly Time, which is focused learning for you. So that's where we plan to do our tier two interventions. Um, we've created a special schedule where we're staggering our kindergarten and first grade and our second grade, third and fourth. Um, and providing as much staffing and support during that block of time, at least three to four days a week where we can really help our students who are on the bubble to make those gains in our proficiency rates. Um, our fourth grade team was already doing that, really just as a group. So that's really why we see such huge growth in those fourth grade students, because they have implemented that as a grade level team. Another thing that they were doing really well is intentional and shared planning. So being very intentional about who plans what and sharing that responsibility. So working hard, harder, or smarter, not harder, right? Because they're sharing that as a team. So we really want to take that and use kind of what our fourth grade team did and help some of our other grade level teams do that as well. Um, because it can be overwhelming to plan for all those intervention groups. But Specializing that planning and being intentional about it can take that load off a little bit on the teachers. So we're excited about that next year. Our third school improvement goal was focusing on attendance. Um, and in previous years, what we were putting our efforts towards tracking was our students, decreasing the amount of students that had chronic absenteeism. And this year we switched our focus to just trying to increase the number of students, students that uh, were achieving that uh, federal positive attendance rating of 94% or better. So previously last year, only 55.9% of our student population was achieving that 94% positive attendance rating or better. And our goal is to increase that to 65% of our student body. Um, so I have been tracking this throughout the year using attendance uh, reports and things through Skyward and then I've been posting that out and sharing that with staff, with our student body, on a bulletin board in our, um, right outside our office so that the kids are seeing that every week, sharing it out with our families through Class Dojo and our newsletters and things like that, really trying to make them aware of this goal. Um, and what our progress is throughout the year. So our um, latest data had us at 59.5%, so not quite 
um, at that gold as of yet, but definitely some improvements from last year. Um, so in an, on top of tracking that, we've tried to implement a lot of different strategies this year, some consistent with what we've done in previous years. But one of the avenues that I really wanted to focus on this year was communicating more with parents in terms of educating them on what our attendance policies were, about the, um, our, what the rates were, and exactly how we needed to improve this, um, strategies for how they can help promote positive attendance at home, whether it's school refusal or when to know to keep your kids home. And uh, we were using newsletters. Um, I, at the beginning of the year, started implementing a specific attendance newsletter where the focus was all about that. Uh, we also went back to some old practices of recognizing those students that have had consistent positive attendance rating and rewarding them and incentivizing them as well. Um, one of the areas that I am really proud of at Oak Hill and I know that our school and students enjoy as well is our social emotional wellness programming along with the behavioral health services that we provide. Um, up here on the screen, you're gonna see those broken down into the tiers of support. So when we think of tier one being for all of our students, that's represented by our SEL curriculum, second step, along with the classroom school counseling lessons that I teach on a monthly basis. We also have an emotional regulation room that is available to all students should they need that. And then of course we have our PBIS initiatives that really set the precedent for that safe, positive environment that we wanna cultivate within our building. Um, tier two represents services that would be given to students that are potentially at risk for a variety of things. Um, that could look like small group counseling with me, lunch bunches um, with me, check in, check outs with our office staff and even scheduled nest visits. So our emotion regulation room in keeping with the cardinal theme is called the nest. And we do have students that utilize that space on a daily basis. Um, students that really need that additional support and practice to gain those skills. Finally, tier three represents the services that would be provided to our students who are most at risk in need of the most intensive services. Um, this can be the short-term brief solution focused individual counseling with me, along with some of our outside partners. So we are really fortunate um, to enjoy these partnerships with behavioral specialists of Indiana out of Valparaiso, as well as Crown Counseling out of Crown Point. Um, they provide consultation to our teachers and help them develop behavior strategies to assist students and gain more success in the classroom. They also do provide um, individual therapy as well as small group therapy, which is um, a great resource because it really takes the burden off parents to locate those resources, um, travel to those resources, and in the case of BSI, pay for those resources. So it's been really instrumental in helping a um, small group of students that are in need of those most intensive supports and potentially wouldn't get those without this partnership. Um, just to give you guys some statistics about our nest, um, we have a lot of students who utilize this. And as I mentioned earlier with the scheduled visits, um, as of today, we've had 1,580 scheduled visits to the nest um, and 321 unscheduled visits. So, Prior to um, our implementation of this room, if students were struggling, there really always wasn't availability to come down to the office. Um, having this room has really allowed students to have that place to process through those emotions that are a barrier to their learning um, in a very quick fashion so that they're gaining those skills and eventually our goal for all of the students would be that they can implement them independently of course as they age and with that support from us at the younger grade levels. To go along with that, um, just the collaboration that exists in our building is super pivotal to the success of students. Um, I have worked at Oak Hill for six years. The first three years that I worked at Oak Hill, we did not have a dean of students. Um, the last pa the past three years, we have had a dean. So I can really speak to and compare the differences 
between having a dean of students, having BSI, and not having those supports. Um, one of the things that we really strive for is that preventative, proactive approach with our students. Um, so one specific example that I can share from my perspective is that before the implementation of a dean, um, it was pretty common for my lessons to be canceled or interrupted. Um, therefore, the students were not receiving that tier one preventative approach. Um, one of the lessons that I teach to all of our students is emotion management techniques. And that's obviously, I feel, one of the most pivotal lessons in helping them gain the skills they need to succeed in the classroom. Um, since having a dean, it is a very rare occurrence that that would have to happen. Um, and of course, having BSI is super instrumental for the reasons I mentioned previously, but also for the support that they can offer to students with their specialized training, knowledge, and expertise. Um, I think that it's been such a wondrous addition to having that um, because Although it does not result in the principal or the SSA having less work to do, it certainly results in students getting more of what they need and our school being able to foster that proactive approach of giving kids the tools and the skills that they need before they're in the situations where they need them. And those are lifelong skills. Mm -hmm. Correct, yes. I definitely have a passion for this. Um, and one of the things I was looking at lately were our employability standards for the state of Indiana. And there was such a huge overlap between the SEL competencies that exist in our state and what the topics of second step and the lessons that I teach cover. And it just really kind of drove that point home that these skills are essential to success in the workforce. Because of course, knowledge is important, training and expertise is important, but the ability to collaborate with others in a kind and productive fashion, the ability to manage your own emotions and your own time and organization um, is just pivotal in your success as an employee. Um, and now to celebrate, we always like to share positive things about what we love about Oak Hill. Um, as we've mentioned, um, two of the really things that are huge points of pride for us would be our PBIS strategies and programming, like Mrs. Petrovito had been talking about, um, really just incentivizing that good behavior, talking with students about our expectations and rewarding them for showing those things. Um, over the past semester, what we've been doing is really highlighting our behavior expectations for students and offering incentives um, in a variety of different ways to get them excited about it. Um, they really enjoy these types of things. I think our Snowballs and Snow Cones event was probably one of the most um, exciting ones for them, which we did obviously in winter. Um, of course, our SEL and that support for the whole child. So really thinking about like those extracurriculars that we offer that really add to the experience of our students as they shared with you guys earlier. Um, and we are definitely a relationship oriented building. Um, so we do want to encourage and our staff do a wonderful job of building those relationships, not just with students, but with parents as well. So one of the things we always enjoy is when our parents are coming in for study trips, volunteer opportunities, and all of the um, family engagement activities that we enjoy. I'm going to speak a little bit more to um, what Mrs. Bird just shared with you guys. Um, something that was really exciting about this year and that I really love is our uh, intentional focus each month on a different one of our positive behavior expectations. So this is like a new addition that we included in our PBIS plan this year. Um, so our motto and our PBIS is built around um, a ROCKS acronym. And we often say like our flawed ROCKS in our um, daily meetings and things like that. So what we did is each month we highlighted a different letter of the word ROCKS. So R is respect. And then we really, really intentionally focus that entire month on extra lessons, messaging, um, whether it's in posters or in our morning uh, announcements, classroom activities on how, what does respect look like? How can we actually model that and work on that specific skill? And then we would reward students and incentivize them to show that, be that desired behavior. And we thought of like different activities and ways to celebrate or reward um, for that positive behavior each month. So like Mrs. 
Mrs. Bird said, we in January we did a snowballs and snow cones um, thing where the kids got to throw like cotton ball snowballs in the cafeteria. Um, my favorite was in March, we did a class-wide contest on cooperation and we did a March Madness bracket. And then the reward for the winning classes were they got to come in early in the morning and we had some varsity basketball players from the high school come and they played basketball with them. Um, so that was a way to engage like our high school students too. This last month, our focus is on safety. So we're having a lot of intentional lessons and messaging on safety, both here at school and in the community. And next week we're partnering, partnering with some of our uh, community safety services the Lowell Police Department, the Fire Department, Tri Creek uh, Ambulance Service, and Lake County SWAT are all coming to Oak Hill to do like a touch a truck event that all kids, regardless of any kind of reward, are gonna get to experience too. So again, it gave us another opportunity to focus on a positive behavior, but partner with our community members too. So I've absolutely loved that. Um, and it's been a really exciting addition this year. Um, another important element of our school is really bringing in our families for those fun events to foster that engagement and relationship between school and home. Um, one of the things that we always start the year off is Popsicle Play Date, which is where we invite all of our kindergarten families, as well as any families who might be new to Oak Hill, to come learn about our school and our procedures, and then enjoy a Popsicle on the playground. Um, one of the things that Mrs. Muha brought to our school was called the Monster March. And basically on the day that our students are permitted to wear their Halloween costumes, we actually have them parade outside of the building and invite parents to come and watch them. Of course, we also do our Veterans Day program, which is a really beautiful experience for our students to recognize our members in the service. Um, another really um, unique idea that Mrs. Muha came up with is reverse caroling, which was a very exciting event that we actually did last year for the first time um, and then repeated again this year because it was such a hit. And basically we have our students singing a variety of holiday songs in various areas of the building and then parents and families get to come in and follow that circuit to see all of the groups sing their songs. Um, we also have lots of fun PTO family events such as our movie night back in December. Um, that one was particularly cute because uh, we did have a special visit from Santa Claus, so that was really special. Um, we also do One School, One Book, which was another initiative um, that Mrs. Muha had really been called to do at our school. We started it again last year and we're able to continue it this year. Um, basically, the premise is that every student in the entire school reads the same book. Um, and we have a pacing guide to help families follow along at home. And it really just brings that sense of community because then no matter where you are and who you're talking to, um, we all get to experience that together. Um, all staff and students were given a copy of the book. Um, of course, we also had our art show, which is fantastic. If you've never been, I highly suggest you come and see it. In fact, the art is still up at the moment. Um, Ms. Schutz, um, shout out to her because she it's just so creative with all of the various projects that she has the kids do, and I don't think she repeats a single one from year to year. And then finally, upcoming, we have our kindergarten graduation, which our kindergarten team of teachers have been really passionate about doing this. Um, and they, again, began it last year, and of course are continuing it this year. And it was such an awesome experience for our families. There were definitely a lot of um, smiles and tears of joy. Okay. Um, another component to that well-rounded education is just that emphasis on serving our community and others. Um, our student council is tremendous in this effort. This year alone, they um, hosted several drives, um, one of which was for our community help network. The community help network partners with us to provide buddy bags to students. Um, this is something that we like to show our gratitude to them by having our student council raise um, items and funds for them. We also wanted to um, share that with our Tri Kappa. So Tri Kappa of Lowell, um, our student council raised um, a whole lot of food for their annual drive that they hosted in town. And then finally, as part of our One School, One Book event, um, Mrs. Catravito organized the opportunity for students to donate to the Humane Indiana 
Wildlife Center, which was then followed up with a visit from them where our students got to experience a variety of very unique animals that they have rescued, such as an owl. Um, I think so. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I can keep talking. You guys yeah. So um, we wanted to highlight some of our extracurriculars. Um, we had a very successful year. Um, so some of the things, um, extracurriculars for our students are obviously student council, robotics, science bowl, um, math bowl, nifty notes, girls on the run, peer mentoring, and our new club, which is the garden club. Um, so our science bowl team, they were the state champs. Our math bowl also placed first in their competition and 21st at state. And our robotics team qualified for state this year and actually placed fourth out of 150 teams, um, which is very impressive. Um, and a little bit about the Garden Club, they are actually redoing the entire courtyard of our building right now, and all the students are doing all of the work. So that's also exceptional. The teachers, sponsors kind of ran with that, and the students are excited. I think we have like 20 members, mm -hmm. which is awesome. So. They've even committed to like coming over their summer break to tend to the garden because obviously we know gardening is mostly taking place during that time when school's not in session, but they are ready for it. They're excited. Mr. Anderson can let them in. Okay? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> I'll pick you up on the way. So that is the end of our presentation. Thank you for listening. Um, we really love our school and thank you again to the students and families that Congratulations, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, you guys do not have to stay for the rest of this business portion of the meeting. I know it gets late and it's bedtimes are coming up. So if you guys want to stay, you're welcome. If you want to leave, you may. You stay. <laughs> Business consent items. Approve the minutes of the meeting held on Thursday, April 25th, 2024. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Motion passes. Approve payroll, payroll, and claims. I'll make a motion. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.
So originally, the, the thought process, or even if they, they graduated, they were no longer our student, but they were sponsoring the trip. And so um, the signups for the particular trip occurred, and there were a lot of current juniors that were like, would go, but they weren't eligible. So we did a little bit of searching through other schools. Do this? And the answer is yes. So after the kids graduate, they are allowed to go on the trip. We consulted with our legal counsel, and our legal counsel was completely fine with it as long as our insurance carrier was good with it. So we went to our insurance carrier, and our insurance carrier is good with it. It cross referenced the insurance policy of EF Tours against our, our corporation policy. And so we um, checked all the boxes and were requesting for the board to approve the eligibility and expand it to the class of 2025 for the trip in hopes that we will get additional students to paying for this a lot of Correct. So that's a lot of food. So mom and dad's good too. <laughs> Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Number three, um, grade re reconfiguration approved Lake Prairie Elementary School to consist of grades kindergarten through grade four. Oak Hill Elementary School to consist of grades kindergarten through grade four. Three Creeks Elementary School to consist of kindergarten through grade four. Wool Intermediate School to consist of grades five and six. And Wool Middle School to consist of grades seven and eight beginning with the 2024-25 school year. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. I'll say. Motion and second. The reason this was added to the agenda tonight is we recently uh, submitted our proposal to the Department of Ed to uh, create the Lowell Intermediate School. There's a particular window that you can do that, so we've been waiting forever to do that. The board approved the previous action to create the Lowell Intermediate School, 50 grades by uh, through the intermediate, so it would be a school of grade five and six. The state needs to have the official uh, action of reconfiguring then the other schools, even though it's assumed it needs to be very clear and specific. Mm -hmm. So that was the reason it was added to the agenda uh, this evening. Mm -hmm. No surprises. Any discussion? Okay. Um, I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Okay, consent items. Accept the donation from Vinimos Inc. of East Chicago, Indiana in the amount of $2,000 to help fund the Lola High School Welding ACA for welding supply purchases. Accept the anonymous donation in the amount of $20 to help support Keep Them Forward to pay down negative student meal balances. Accept the donation from Lake Prairie Elementary School PTO in the amount of $500 to be used for the 2024 Lake Prairie Alumni Scholarship. Accept the donation from Lake Prairie PTO in the amount of $331.76 to be used for the grade three study trip to the planetarium. Number five, accept the donation from Lake Prairie Elementary School PTO in the amount of $228.13 to be used for the grade five study trip to the Challenger Learning Center. And number six, accept the donation from Lake Prairie Elementary School PTO in the amount of $107.97 to be used to purchase field day bracelets. I'll make Second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Public comment not related to agenda items. The next uh, meeting of the Triton School Board of Trustees is scheduled for Thursday, May 23rd, 2024. And before I close out the meeting, I just want to once again thank all of our teachers and staff um, on this Teacher Appreciation Week. Um, I had a recent experience this week with a student out of the district and being able to realize all that we have to truly offer here with our staff and the programs that our counselors um, are offering. I know now that other schools are not doing that. Sometimes we take that for granted and man, did it impact me this week how great of our staff and teachers and programs that we have here. We really are doing the best we can for kids. So thank you for everything everybody puts into our schools and our students. Anybody else? All right. Meeting adjourned. Thank you.